Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by Harry's. Stop overpaying for a great shave and start the new year off right. Go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code HAMNATION when you check out. By ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Right now, get free expedited FedEx shipping when you go to ring.com slash hamnation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 231, on Wednesday, January 20th, 2016. Ham Radio is kid stuff. Hey, good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday night. It's 8 p.m. Central, and you know what that means. That means that it is Ham Nation time. We've got a a really good show for you tonight. It's all about kids and youth. And uh, along that vein, my son Tyler was going to be in here tonight for the beginning of the show because today is his 16th birthday. And I, I got out some of the old cups. We, 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 do, we did cups for his birthdays several years ago. And so this was, this was Tyler's birthday cup uh, from 2002, three? When is this one? 2003. So I uh, got his name and everything all hot stamped and engraved in there. So uh, anyway, he's, uh, he's in there with his girlfriend right now. He would much rather visit with her than come in here and, and, and play with the, uh, the old ham radio fogies. Uh, but be that as it may, we're, we're happy that you're here uh, playing with us tonight. Uh, we've got a, a couple of folks missing in action. That's why you're seeing me drive the bus tonight. Uh, Bob Heil is out. He is at the NAM show. And Gordon West is out. He is out at Quartz Fest. He sent us some pictures. We'll look at those uh, right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, got some uh, quick shots. Go ahead and just scroll through those real quick, Victor. Victor's driving the bus tonight over at Petaluma. So those are just some quick shots that... Uh, of the folks over at Quartz Fest that we got via email from Gordon today, there she's waving at somebody. Uh, everybody's waving. So, oh man, look at that! Wow, man, I wish I was there. That is nice. Quartz Fest 2016 in full effect, and Gordon West will have a, a complete after-action report uh, when he comes back, uh, which uh, next week, probably week after next, whenever it is that he gets back. But uh, let's go around the horn and see who we have. Uh, Letty's first. Let's go to uh, Colorado. And we have Amanda, and Amanda's going to be on for the full show tonight. Hello, Amanda. How are you tonight? Is she? Are you not hearing me? I'm, there you are. I'm doing so, great. No, okay. Well, you were, you. Were, I lost you for a second. Um, what I like to call Papa Lima, some packet loss was going on. Um, so so anyhow, was? good evening, everybody. I'm going to be here the whole show. Don't forget to send me your questions in the chat room. Also, going to go over some IRS hints and tips for you tonight for ham radio stuff. So over to you, Don. That's right, because it is the first uh, first of the year and everyone's getting ready for taxes. So uh, some interesting information Amanda's going to have for us. Also, we have uh, a couple of hours to my north up in Jackson, Mississippi, which uh, it's is it next weekend, George? Or weekend? It's, it's not this weekend coming, but it's next weekend is the Jackson, Mississippi Ham Fest. So we'll try to go up there and see you. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine, Don, and I, I do hope you'll come up to the Capital City Ham Fest in Jackson here the last weekend of the month. Uh, usually always a, a good ham fest, and we're looking forward to it this year, as always. Uh, it's been, well, kind of cold and then almost like spring and then cold again. And today, well, we're kind of in between almost like spring and the next cold wave. We're waiting for maybe some frozen precipitation later this week and uh, kind of concerned about that stuff getting on the antennas. I've got to keep a watch on that tomorrow night as it comes in. You know, when your antenna's up a oh, uh, 1,000 feet or so, it may not be freezing on the ground, but it is up there. And you build up a little ice and uh, you could have a reflected power problem. And it becomes a big problem, you know, when no, oh, maybe you're shooting 25 kW or so into it. So, we're going to be watching the antennas here for the next uh, night or two and be sure that everything's in proper working order. 
Good deal. What are we talking about on Smoke and Solder tonight? Just a quick preview before we get to our guest. Well, you know, last week we said we were going to talk about Smith charts, and I showed you a Smith chart, and then we really didn't talk about it that much. And that's what we're going to do again this week. I'm going to show you a Smith chart, but then we're not really going to talk about it that much. <laughs> we're going to talk about something, though, that we need to know about in preparation for uh, exploring the Smith chart. And this week, that topic is going to be impedance. Okay. We're, we're going to sneak up on, on the Smith chart. That's good. Yeah. All right, It'll, good. They'll never see it coming. Oh, no, no, Smith. Smith, he's, he's kind of hard. On, he, he's not, he, he, he don't got real good eyes anyway. So, all right, very good. Well, we're, yeah, we're looking forward to Jackson Hamfest. And we have a guest tonight. Our guest is, is Neil Rapp, WB9 VPG. And what prompted uh, me wanting Neil on tonight is I went to the Hammond, Louisiana Hamfest last week. And ran into uh, a guy named Bryant. His call sign is KG5HVO, a Kilo Golf 5 high voltage operator. And he is 11 years old. And he and I were talking with his mom about Newsline's Young Ham of the Year Award, which uh, is the nominating period will be coming up for that fairly soon. And then uh, several weeks ago, I had a principal of Einstein Charter School, which is like a magnet school in New Orleans. And I had my, my hand held in my, uh, in my production room at work as she came in to do some, uh, some enrollment commercials. And she saw some of my stuff there, and she's like, well, I'm kind of a techno geek. What's, what's all this stuff? And so I, we, we spent 20 minutes making a commercial and then another hour and a half talking about ham radio and talking about school clubs and talking about Young Ham of the Year and talking about, um, talking about ISS school contacts and, and looking at video and talking about Ham Nation and talking about Amateur Radio Newsline, and talking about our guest, who is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Neil, why don't, you, uh, why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about your background and, and why it's very apropos that when we talk about youth and ham radio, uh, we have uh, you in, in, in particular and people like you uh, in general to, to talk about this. Uh, Neil, how are you tonight? I'm great, Don. Thanks for uh, having me on. It's good to be uh, with you and, and here to talk about things. I had planned on uh, coming to you from the um, high school shack, but uh, it's a little more impressive than, than mine. But um, I'm, I'm recovering from, from this rough day today at work. It, it was a snow day, so uh, I'm, I'm stuck at home. But um, I, I got started when I was five years old into ham radio back in 1976. And we I actually have the, pictures uh, of that. Victor, pull the that youngest, up. Yeah, the youngest ham in the world at the time. That's uh, actually from the 1977 Dayton Hamvention program. Wow. And I sat at uh, a booth and signed a bunch of those QSL cards that you uh, see pictured up there. And... Um, met people and did a bunch of eyeball QSOs, and uh, that's uh, Barry Copeland, WB6EJV. He um, was a representative with uh, Kenwood at the time. How, and, old were um, you in, how old were you in these picks, Neil? How old I, were you I was, I was six years old. Um, in fact, I still had my in call there. Um, right. So I was just getting uh, just a little over six, and he said, uh, we want to surprise Neil with a radio for his birthday. So he was on the phone with my parents, and he uh, was a pilot. In fact, he ended up uh, flying for Air Canada for a long time uh, after his uh, tenure with Kenwood. Uh, but he brought me, uh, or he sent me the radio, and then, and then flew in uh, by himself into the local airport and came to see me to, to formally present it to me and everything. And so um, I've been a Kenwood fan ever since. Uh, I think that's one way to... Uh, to convince you on on brand building is give you a radio so yeah, uh, yeah that'll work. <laughs> that, that worked out pretty well so i i went through technician general advanced waited till i was 18 to get my extra i, I just uh, that 20 words a minute just wasn't my thing but finally uh knocked that out and uh, then uh ended up um teaching high school chemistry and so I started doing um, ham radio clubs at school, and uh, that's that's how I got started in doing all of this. So tell us a little bit about the school, and what school is it? You're in Indiana, so that explains yeah. the snow. 
Yes. Uh, we're at Bloomington High School South uh, in Bloomington, Indiana. There's uh, two high schools here uh, in the main city, anyway. And uh, that was my first group back in 2002 at uh, Bloomington High School South. And uh, we actually dug back. We found this article uh, from 1942 that Bloomington High School, before they split into North and South, actually had a ham radio club, a W9BSC, and that's the picture that you see here. Um, and they were talking about, uh, in the article there, how they were uh, off the air for the war effort uh, for a while, that they were on in 1942, and then they had to, to sit out for a while. So uh, the radio club at uh, Bloomington South has uh, been on and again, off again, about three times now, and I uh, started it back up in uh, 2002. Um, we got a grant from the ARRL to um, get everything set up. That was the radio you saw those guys unpacking back then. And there's a picture of our QSL card in school. And here is a guy, Una Padrig, uh, KC9UUS, who was Young Ham yep. of the Year a few years ago. And uh, mm -hmm. Benny Richmond, I, my, his call escapes me at the moment, but they're assembling the... Uh, Two element stepper antenna that we have at this point. They're putting the stepper motor on there and um, putting all that together. Uh, here is Cole Evans, uh, KC9 DMB. Uh, he uh, was out there painting the tower that it was going to go on, and then we uh, were able to get a local company to come install that up on the roof. So there is our two element stepper that we um, have been using for the last few years. Um, there at the club. Here is the um, world champion group. Uh, they won school club roundup uh, for the first time uh, in fall of 2015. And so there's the whole crew with the, the pictures. And uh, we had uh, Patrick Lissandru, KC9UUS there. At, and this is from Dayton with Carol Perry, WB2MGP. And he spoke at the youth forum on a de expedition that he took over to um, Cyprus with his family and, and uh, wrote an article about it in QST, got the cover photo and, uh, and spoke about it at the Dayton Youth Forum. So uh, he's probably our most uh, famous alumnus so far. He's uh, done great things. He's uh, won the Goldfarb Scholarship, the Young Ham of the Year Award, the, the Hiram Percy Maxim Award, um, just can't say enough good things about uh, Padraig. Um, that whole family and, is impressive. His sisters are following closely in in his footsteps yes. as well. So uh, Helena just, the whole just, family is just absolutely impressive family. Love them to death. Yeah, Helena just got back from uh, Honduras. She was doing some medical work over there um, over a break. And uh, Maria is in the club now, and she uh, is doing some writing for the YLRL and uh, – she uh, is on our contest team where uh, she breaks through all those pile-ups, and uh, she's quite a singer, too. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll probably hear some more out of that family. Um, Scott, um, K0MD, uh, Dr. Scott Wright, uh, and I are here at, at Dayton, and, and Scott co-nominated Patrick for that uh, Young Ham of the Year Award that uh, you're so involved with, and we can't uh, thank you enough uh, for that and, and Scott's really uh, helped us to uh, motivate things along and, and offered a uh, challenge to us to uh, get involved in uh, contesting more than just the school club roundup and to try CQ worldwide. So uh, he gave us uh, a challenge to uh, go out and get DXCC just with the CQ worldwide ready and phone. Uh, contest. So they worked long and hard to do that, but uh, they were able to to pull that off in uh, about 16 hours in, on the phone um, version. They got uh, 104 countries. And then another thing that he uh, had set up for us to do was to go to Contest University at Dayton. So here is uh, Tim Duffy, K3LR, and our group. We've got Ryan Cutshaw, KD9DAB there, and Thomas Getz. Um, with me, and we all went to Contest University and learned a lot of great things um, thanks to some help from the Northern California DX Association that, that paid our way. Um, but we learned some things about how to increase our score, and so we were able to 
to pull off first place in school club roundup again and, and know what we were doing for CQ Worldwide since this was the first time uh, we've done it. So we're really appreciative of everything that Tim did for us. Here's Patrick again getting the um, Hiram Percy Maxim Award there and um, before that the, the Goldfarb uh, Scholarship. Um, and he just did a clean sweep of everything. And uh, just talked to him. He's uh, getting, There he is uh, accepting the Young Ham of the Year Award and some guy back there in the background. Um, he uh, is uh, going to be interning with SpaceX again this year. He was at uh, Cape Canaveral last summer. He's going to be out at Hawthorne doing avionics this summer with SpaceX um, while he's working on the RF for a satellite uh, at school at Cornell uh, where he's studying. Um, this is our group this year. This is from School Club Roundup um, in the fall, and they were able to uh, win first place in that, but that's our, our contest group from uh, this fall that you see there. And here is Ryan, Maria, and Ryan. Uh, Maria there in the middle is uh, the baby uh, Lissandru. She's the, the youngest of them. Uh, Ryan Butler is on the left, and then Ryan Cutshaw, KD9DAB, is on the right, and they're in the middle of uh, working school club round up there. Up in the shack, that's the uh, shack at school, and uh, Ryan's uh, freshman brother, uh, Trevor, is there with the uh, Burger King crown on. He's uh, hard at work on the log, and uh, they had a great time. This is uh, during CQ Worldwide. And uh, Ryan did just about every contact on uh, on our 104 countries that we worked um, that weekend. So uh, that was pretty cool. And they love these water speakers that uh, would shoot water up uh, with the audio. So they uh, they had to get a set of those uh, afterwards. So that's our uh, shack at Bloomington High School South. And... Um, We've exposed over 2,000 students to, to ham radio. We've uh, had about 100 members. We've got uh, 25 this year. Um, we've had $54,700 worth of scholarships received uh, from various places, specifically for ham radio. Uh, we've licensed 31 people, and uh, we can't do it without some help from from people and uh, the ARL Education and Technology Program has been a big help. They're, they're funding uh, for the station grant and uh, for further education and some people that helped us out with the uh, Stepper, the Radio Club of America and Owens Communications and our local club, Bloomington Amateur Radio Club. And then, um, of course, Bob, uh, Bob Heil um, got us a, a headset finally. We're up in the middle of a... Uh, penthouse that has all the hair handling systems for the school and it's very very loud and so that uh, headset was was very welcome um so we want to thank them and uh and all the parents and all the families that have that have helped out with that good deal fascinating stuff now now this is obviously the canine sou club is obviously a world-class school club what does it take to get started in this, if we've got some educators maybe watching tonight or who will be watching this perhaps in the rerun, what does it take to get something like that started? Just just getting off the ground floor. Uh, what does it take to start something like this? Well, there's a lot of ways that you can start this. I mean, I know clubs that have done this totally independent of school, and then there's, there's people who have done it in school. But in, in a school situation, it really, really helps to have somebody there on staff that the kids can make contact with, even if it's not a ham. Um, maybe a ham can come in and, and take care of some of the ham stuff, but there's an educator there that the kids will connect with that that can um, kind of you know talk them through it and, and be a familiar face. Uh, we, we found that a lot of times um, the kids are a little resistant to go to other places to do other things, you know, to take their tests somewhere else. So we give the tests there um, at school. And, and a lot of times the, the emphasis really doesn't need to be on licensing to start with. I think that's probably the, the number one thing that I hear from, from Carol Perry and, and from others that, that have done this for longer than I have, that um, you don't start out, hey, this is a great thing. 
let's study for another test. You know, that, that's, that's not exactly the way to get kids excited about radio. You, you, you put together a schedule. You get somebody on there so you're not spinning the knob, waiting and hoping to find somebody. And then an hour later, you still haven't made a contact or you made a contact with somebody 50 miles away and it's not very exciting. So if, if you can bring it in, show them what it can do, have a contact set up ahead of time, and have somebody there to kind of mentor the way, um, that's, that's a big help. But, you know, starting out with, let's study for another test, that, that's not the greatest thing. Um, the kids, as, as they uh, work the contest, the school club roundup, which is a great thing, um, and, you know, we're able to get the, the equipment grant from the uh, ARL Education and Technology Program. Um, they were able to, to get on the air without a license with, with just a control operator. And then they want to do it by themselves. And, the, and so that's where then they say, hey, I'm going to get my license because I want to be able to do this at home or I want to be able to do this by myself or I want to use my call sign whenever I work Peter One Island. You know, that, that's a, a big thing that I think needs to happen. So I guess that's probably the first place that if, if an educator wants to find out more information is, is go to the ARRL, to their, uh, to their uh, education uh, department. Uh, I, I forget exactly what it's called now. You just mentioned it, but it's not in front of me. But that's, that's probably the first place that, that – or a great place to start, I would think, uh, for a resource. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have a discussion board. They have, they have resources online. And uh, like I said, the equipment program you know, provided a radio, an antenna, feed line, power supply – you know, everything you could think of. And, and right. over the years, we've added to that and, and we've done an equipment loan program so our kids can take home a radio. We even have a couple of HF rigs now uh, that people have donated and, and they can take the rig home and use it until they graduate or they get one of their own. Uh, we do the contest. They love transmitter hunting. They, any, any excuse to drive. Uh, they're all over it. So, you know, transmitter hunts have been great. We've gone out and visited elementary schools. There's a book that they read that talks about a ham radio, and they don't really know what that is. So uh, Ryan uh, Cutshell has gone out to uh, the elementary schools um, and taken the radio, and, and Quinn McNeil did uh, a couple of years ago, too, and showed them what what it was. So now we've got kids in the elementary school finding out about ham radio. So by the time they get to the high school, they already know a little bit about it. So it, it gets their interest up. That's what it's all about is, is getting a microphone in the hand uh, and, and getting those young people on the radio. So if you're an educator and you want to find out more about, about maybe getting a ham club started in your school, of course, search out your local ham club for one. Uh, check with the ARRL for another. And uh, I would imagine that um, if, uh, if you wanted to email uh, someone like Neil, uh, he'd be more than happy to help as well. So, uh, Neil, if, sure. if you, have a, you have a website or a uh, – well, I guess they can go to the K9SOU.org yeah. and get in touch with you. That would be a great place to start. Yeah, there, K9SOU.org so. is our, um, our radio club page. We have a lot of resources there, and, and we'll keep uh, our contest schedule up there and some resources uh, – um, for things to do and things to uh, study with and um, what we're doing. So that's a, a good resource, too. And uh, you can contact me. And, and there's a lot of other educators out there that, that are doing mm -hmm. some uh, some amazing things. And um, School Club Roundup is just a great opportunity to get kids on the air. It's scripted um, so they can get in there. And my kids really get into the competitive aspect of it. Um, I know it's supposed to be more of an operating activity than it is a contest, but uh, our kids really get into the to the competitiveness of it. And so um, School Club Roundup is a great way to start out, too. It's twice a year, and, and that's something that will get kids on the air. You have everything scripted right in front of them, exactly what to say, and that gets them started. Awesome, Neil. Well, I want to thank you for being a, a guest on Ham Nation tonight. We really, really appreciate that. And uh, appreciate everything that you're doing for the youth of, of Ham Radio. And we'll uh, look forward to seeing you in August at Huntsville at the next uh, Young Ham of the Year Award. 
Yeah, I can't thank uh, Newsline and all the sponsors enough for the experience with Young Ham of the Year um, that uh, Patrick uh, was able to get, and we're going to be nominating some more. Uh, we've got some kids that are really fired up uh, because of that award and, and all the things that happened from that. So I uh, can't thank you enough for, for your role in that and, and for Newsline and CQ and Yezu and all the sponsors. Um Emmett and everybody for uh, doing that because that's that's been a real inspiration and a, and a motivator for a lot of our uh, current members and, and they're interested in that award so we'll Good. we'll be uh, nominating more soon. Well, we would we would have no reason to do that if it weren't for for teachers uh, like you and, and your students. So so Neil again, thank you so much for uh, for being on Ham Nation tonight. We do appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Hey thanks, Don, Don, do you mind if I it. ask a couple questions? Uh, yeah, Amanda, go ahead. Hey, thanks. Hi, Neil. Hi, and, Amanda. Um, I, I just, I had a couple of questions. I, I think that I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever been fibbing when I'm telling children this, but I always tell them that having your ham radio license looks really good on your college application. And I'm always trying to encourage them to do that. It looks special. Um, does that stuff actually help the kids get into college? Things like that. You, you know, more and more colleges are, are looking at those extracurricular things and, and, and things like that. And, and that does set them apart from others. And so anytime that you can uh, add something to set yourself apart from other people and, and show that you have the dedication and, and uh, the know-how to be involved in that, it definitely helps. Uh, you know, everything seems to be about test scores, but... Uh, more and more, we're, you know, they're looking for those kinds of things. Very good. And, and that's what I would think is that it would make them um, stick out just a little bit um, with, I know, committees look at that kind of stuff and whatnot. And also, um, do you help your students in your club find extra scholarships because they're ham radio operators? Oh, yeah. We're always uh, announcing uh, the scholarships. Uh, or there's, there's basically two big rounds of those. Uh, the Foundation for Amateur Radio has a set of scholarships that they award, and you kind of fill out one application and then check off all the boxes and get all the signatures that you need for each individual one that you actually qualify for. They're kind of a clearinghouse for that. And then, of course, the ARL Foundation, uh, they do the same thing. There's a, a common scholarship application that you fill out, and you kind of check off the ones that you're uh, qualified for and interested in and... Uh, uh, some of those need an essay, some of them don't, so that you, they have all that uh, available and, and you fill that out. And so we announce those every year to uh, to our seniors to uh, to pick up on that. And like I said, we've had uh, around $50,000 worth of those scholarships given out at Bloomington South since 2002. Very good. Wow, that's really great, actually. And uh, I just want to say thank you for all your hard work and working with all those uh kiddos and getting them all involved in ham radio and it sounds like they're all excited to keep on with it and that's what we always hope for is that they stick with it for the rest of their lives so that's all i have over to you don thanks a lot amanda great questions and 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 thanks again uh, to neil you know we mentioned um putting a, a ham radio in a kid's hand is the best way to introduce them to something well i have something in my hand i want to introduce you to and that is a harry's razor once you use a Harry's razor, you're not going to want to go back. You know, 2016 is here. Brand new year. You need a fresh start. Been thinking about New Year's resolutions. Well, here's one. Stop overpaying for a great shave. And right now, Harry's has a trial offer for a limited time. You can get the trial box and pay just three bucks for shipping. Harry's was started by a couple of guys who are passionate about creating a better shave experience. Uh, by delivering an amazing shave at an affordable price and doing it directly to your door. You not only get an amazing shave, but they also give back 1% of their sales and 1% of their time back to the communities they serve. Now, they give you a superior shave at an incredible price because they own the factory in Germany that crafts some of the world's highest quality German steel blades, uh, and it's been making them for almost a century. Harry sells their products at factory direct prices, no middleman. So they cost a fraction of the big brand prices. And getting started with Harry's could not be easier. Over a million guys have made the switch to Harry's. It's, it's a, the website is streamlined. It's easy to use. It takes less than 30 seconds to place an order, literally less than 30 seconds. And the customer service experience is amazing. I've been using 
my Harry's razor for some time. It is amazing quality. The blades are really sharp. You get a, a super close, comfortable shave, and 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 I love it. You know, I've said many times, I'm a confirmed electric guy, and I I see Harry's as something I do nice for myself. It it's it's my little pampering. So when you when you when you when you call up Harry's or go online, this is what comes inside. You get the razor handle, like I have here in my hand. This is uh, is the one that you get. And uh, it has a great feel. This is it's a nice. It's 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 really nice. And of course, um, uh, you get uh, uh, some extra razor blades. You get a shave cream that smells really really good. Everything looks great. Everything feels great. And it costs half as much as other razors. It's all shipped right to your door. Why would you pay thirty two bucks for an eight pack of blades when you can get them for half that at Harry's.com? And the starter set is the amazing deal. You get it all for just fifteen bucks. So go to Harry's.com. You can go right now, as a matter of fact, uh, or you can go after the show. But I want you to go because there is a trial offer for a limited time. You get the trial box, pay just $3 shipping. And if you miss a special offer, uh, you enter the code HAMNATION, you'll get uh, $5 off your first order. So uh, that's the key. HAMNATION is your is your uh, code when you check out. Stop over praying for a great shave. Start the new year off right. Go to harrys.com right now. H-A-R-R-Y-S. Dot com enter code ham nation when you check out harry's thank you so much for uh being a supporter of, of ham nation and and my wife has a harry's razor so you can be a harry's girl so you can just don't be a harry's guy <laughs> there are harry's harry's girls out there and uh something special about a harry's girl i'll tell you that right now now george george is a harry's guy i know for a fact he is because he's smooth and he's got that smoke and solder tip going on <laughs> <laughs> that that was very smooth, Don. Um, and, and I'm going to be even smoother here. You know, last week I mentioned Smith charts, and we showed you one here. And then we really didn't talk much more about it. Well, as I promised earlier in the show, we're going to do that again. So here's the Smith chart. We're going to be talking about that soon, but tonight we're going to talk about something you really need to know about before you can take advantage of it or before you can um, really fully appreciate it, and that's impedance. Uh, impedance is something we all need to know about if we're dealing with antennas and such. So let's take a look at that now, and then we'll be back in a little bit and see what's next. Continuing with our preparation to use a Smith chart, this week we're going to talk about impedance. Impedance is a measurement of opposition a circuit presents to current flow when a voltage is applied. It's a complex ratio of the voltage to the current in an AC circuit and can be thought of as resistance in an AC circuit. While resistance has only magnitude, impedance has both magnitude and phase. In a DC circuit, there's no distinction between impedance and resistance. You could think of a resistance as an impedance with a phase angle of zero. In describing AC circuits, we must use impedance rather than resistance alone because reactance becomes a factor. Inductive and capacitive reactance form the imaginary part of complex impedance, whereas resistance forms the real part. The symbol for impedance is Z and may be represented by writing its magnitude and phase in the form of Z and phase angle. However, Cartesian complex number representation is often more powerful for circuit analysis purposes. The magnitude of the complex impedance is the ratio of the voltage applied to the current amplitude. The phase of the complex impedance is a phase shift by which the current lags the voltage. In Cartesian form, impedance is defined as Z equal R plus J, or X, where the real part of the impedance is R and the imaginary part is the reactance X, we use the J to symbolize the reactance. Where we need to add or subtract impedances, the Cartesian form is more convenient, but when quantities are multiplied or divided, the calculations become simpler if you use the polar form. A circuit calculation such as finding the total impedance of two impedances in parallel may require conversion between forms several times during the calculation. The meaning of electrical impedance can be understood by substituting it into Ohm's law. The magnitude of the impedance acts just like resistance, giving the drop in voltage amplitude across the impedance Z for a given current I. Just as impedance extends Ohm's law to cover AC circuits, 
other results from DC circuit analysis such as voltage division, current division, Thevenin's theorem, and Norton's theorem can also be extended to AC circuits by replacing resistance with impedance. Let's say we know the resistance and reactance of a circuit. How can we combine those to find the impedance? We can use the formula Z equal the square root of R squared plus X squared. Let's take an old 50 ohm Ethernet terminator and measure that here with the rig expert antenna analyzer. We've got 49.3 ohms of resistance and minus 4.77 ohms of reactance. Let's plug those numbers in and see how it calculates. Our formula impedance equal the square root of R squared plus X squared. We'll insert 49.3 for R and minus 4.77 for X. Regardless of whether X is a positive or a negative number, we'll drop the sign and deal with it like it's a positive number. Next, we'll square the numbers and we get 2430 and 22.75. We'll add those two together to get 2452.75. We'll take the square root of that number and find that the impedance is 49.5 ohms. Let's look and see what the antenna analyzer says. 49.5. So now we know how to take a resistance and a reactance and combine them to get impedance. Getting a little bit closer to where we can actually do something with this. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about SWR, and then I think we're probably actually going to put some plots on that chart and see what they all mean. But, you know, last week I asked a question, what is the opposite of an ohm? And we got a good bit of response on that, but our winner, chosen in a random drawing, was David, KE5EDS, and he said the opposite of ohm is MO, M-H-O. Uh, congratulations, David. You're correct. And you're going to win this MFJ113 Super Bright Large 12 or 24-hour clock. Uh, it's an alarm clock, but it's 12 or 24 hours, and it's big. Can you see it with my mic in the way? Probably not. Congrats, David. We'll be sending that out to you. You know, uh, the Mo, and um, Don, we're not talking about the Mo uh, from uh, Larry and Curly. This is a different We're not. Mo. No. Oh, no, man. this is a different Mo. Uh, to avoid conf confusion, I think they have changed the terminology there. Now they call it, uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, it's uh, Simon or Seaman, S I E M E N, instead of yeah. Mo. And what it is is actually uh, a unit of conductance, which is right the opposite of resistance, like you'd expect. The next week, I've got another question here and a great prize. What we've got, and I don't know if you've seen this or not, Don, this is a DX Engineering canvas tote bag. That's a great bag. This is nothing like those that you uh, see in the shopping malls and the grocery stores. No. That's like now a this, tool bag. That's heavy. That's very yeah, this nice. Is, this like is canvas a heavy duck. duty canvas. Yeah. This is sort of like those bags that tower climbers use. But yeah, exactly. I use mine to carry coax and cables in when I'm, you know, setting up for field day or something like that. And we're going to give one of those away next week. If you'd like That's to nice. win, then answer this for me. Who coined the term impedance? And if you think you know the answer... Uh, send it to me, hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and we'll draw next week and see who's going to win that canvas tote bag. Well, right now, let's get a message from ICOM, one of the sponsors of Ham Nation. Get into HF this winter season. Whether you're just starting out, a ham on the go, or an operator wanting to upgrade your shack, ICOM has a radio for you. Looking for that practical rig to get you communicating on the HF bands? The IC718 combines DSP technology in a compact size. It's durable and great for casual HF operating, and it's got easy-to-use and other attractive features not found in other entry-level radios. Want a solid HF radio in a small footprint? Consider the rugged, water-resistant IC7200. It's perfect to take on your next RV adventure. Or set it up as an emergency station for your MCOM group. 
the 7200 offers simplified operation and features for voice, CW, and digital modes. Searching for that high-performing radio for everyday use? Try the IC7410. Casual and season operators alike will love this HF radio. It builds upon ICOM celebrated IC746 Pro. It includes faster DSP and built-in 15 kHz first IF filter, band scope, antenna tuner, and more. Does your shack need an update? How about the IC7100? You can use this mobile rig as a touchscreen base station. The separate operating controller is great for hams with limited shack space. You can even explore D-Star digital features, multiband, and all mode operation. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM selection of HF radios. You can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation and throw your name in the hat for some great swag prizes like t-shirts, uh, hats. And while you're there, you can also learn how you could win the monthly grand prize drawing for a radio. And for January, that radio is going to be the ICOM ID-880H VHF UHF transceiver. It's the one I use for D-Star. It's a switchable VHF UHF dual band. Does analog and D-Star, wideband receive, free cloning software, and a lot more. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this and each episode of Ham Nation and register to win. And Don... We've been sitting here patiently waiting on some news, and I think you're nominated. I can hook you up. Let's go ahead. In fact, here, I'll, I'll, point, I'll, I'll point the antenna of my ID-51 at the camera and watch. The news will magically appear because it's the RF and my manly manliness. Watch this. Watch. Ooh, here comes the news. Ooh. From Amateur Radio <laughs> Newsline Report, number 1,994, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, January 20th, 2016. The ARRL National Parks on the Air event has sparked at least one ham club to hold a commemorative event of its own. Also inspired by the centennial celebration, one local group in Lawton, Oklahoma, is conducting a similar event that will run for the next 11 months. ARN spoke with Ron Grossman, AF5Q, about putting some 65 public parks on the air. The plan is for the ham to go to the park set up like a little portable station, post it on uh, like the DX Summit website and operate whatever bands. It's primarily going to be a daytime operation. I'm not going to operate any nighttime stuff. And we'll just call CQ Lawton Parks on the air, and uh, we're going to be using the call sign W5KS, the uh, Lawton Fort Sill Amateur Radio Club call sign. Lawton Parks on the Air will run from February 1st to December 31st, 2016. Open to all licensed hams. They have online information about the event as well. Go to the W5KS website. It's W5KS.net. You'll see the park schedule there. Certificates will be given for those making contact with the Lawton Park Service. The rules will be updated on the W5KS website to denote awards given for contacts. For Amateur Radio Newsline in Shawnee, Oklahoma, I'm Mike Askins, KE5CXP. If your club is running a similar event, we'd love to hear about it. Our email address is newsline at arnewsline.org. Reports from Sweden indicate that the annual Alexanderson special event operation of its vintage transmitter on Christmas Eve drew its best response ever. Almost everyone likes to have high expectations on Christmas Eve, and this past holiday the operators of the Alexanderson Alternator Station at the World Heritage Grimmiton site in Sweden had their hopes fulfilled. The transmitter's annual special event operation appears just to have had its best year ever, according to Lars Kalland, SM6NM. Preliminary accounting tallied more than 350 listener reports, most of them from radio amateurs. Listeners in Germany accounted for nearly 160 such reports, with listeners in the US filing eight reports. SAQ uses the very low frequency of 17.2 kHz. Lars added, quote, the transmission appears to be our best so far, unquote. The transmitter, which is more than 90 years old, was developed by Swedish engineer and radio pioneer Ernst Alexanderson. The tradition of holiday transmissions began in 2006. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Bucci, 4NJH in Nottingham, in the UK. And finally this week, legendary rock musician David Bowie passed away January 10th. Astronauts and hams were among those who mourned his death. Jim Dameron, N8TMW, picks up the story. 
When International Space Station astronaut Tim Peake, KG-5BVI, delivered a poignant tribute to rock legend David Bowie on Twitter, his well-chosen words from high above the Earth were quickly followed by a similar tweet from retired ISS astronaut Chris Hadfield, VA-3OOG slash KC-5RNJ. Clearly, the regard these two astronauts had for the late rocker reaches beyond the bounds of Earth. But the most stunning tribute may still be Hadfield's rendition of Bowie's classic hit, Space Oddity, the story of stranded astronaut Major Tom that became a hit in 1969. Hadfield recorded his interpretation in a 2013 video while aboard the space station, creating what became the first musical recording made in space. The popular video has been logging nonstop views on YouTube even more than ever since Bowie's death on Monday, January 10th. Bowie had reportedly seen and loved the Internet video, and he was not alone. By some press accounts, it has been viewed more than 29 million times. There are fans, of course, and then there are brothers of Major Tom in spirit. That would be Canada's Commander Hatfield and Britain's Major Peak. To these two astronauts and radio amateurs, Major Tom rules the heavens now more than ever. Godspeed, Major Tom. And that's all from the Amateur Radio News Line, your independent source for amateur radio news for over 37 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. With Mike Askins, KE5CXP, Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, Jim Dameron, N8TMW, and Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team worldwide, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Sad that we lost David Bowie, but uh, there's been another celebrity death and then of course glenn fry from the eagles it seems like seems like we've lost someone new uh, every week uh this 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 year so far lost a uh, talented individual and uh we're we're saddened by that so our thoughts and prayers go out to all those involved with the eagles and joe walsh of course uh, very close to glenn fry so our thoughts and prayers with uh, everyone who is an eagles fan and glenn's friends and family and associates. No solar update tonight from Dr. Dr. T. She uh, has been extremely busy uh, coming back from her New Orleans trip. Also, uh, her father uh, is uh, still ill and she's been dealing with that as well. So your continued prayers on that front would be greatly appreciated. And we'll get Dr. T back on here just as soon as we possibly can. But uh, before we uh, carry on with, with uh, uh, the proceedings and get into some of the things that Amanda wanted to talk about, about tax uh, things with uh, Aries people. We want to talk about a brand new sponsor uh, here to, to Ham Nation tonight, and that is a company called Ring. And they sent me one of these things, and I installed it. It's a doorbell, but it's not just any doorbell. This thing is amazing. Everyone's familiar with the sound of a doorbell. It means that a package is being delivered or friends are coming over for dinner, but it's also could be the sound of someone planning to rob you. And you know, if you're not home, over 95% of home break-ins happen during the day. Burglars almost always start by ringing your doorbell to see if someone's home before they come in and ransack your place. Well, with the Ring doorbell, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It has advanced motion detection that will alert you even if someone doesn't ring the doorbell. It has motion sensing stuff. And it's, it, sounds like, it sounds like a wind chime. With the Ring doorbell, you can talk to delivery people. You can keep an eye on your package. If someone tries to mess with it, you get an instant alert and high-def video of the whole thing. And it's, it's on there 24-7-365. Now, I, wanna, I got a little piece of video here. I want to show you this. Um, this is my back door. Uh, let's go ahead and run that, Victor. There's my back door. You can see the FedEx guy is leaving. I got the, uh, got the little alert. Here's my son feeding the dog. So now we know. You know, when he feeds the dog, here's, here's my wife coming home. Hey, what you doing? Where do you think you're going? I'm going to wash my hair dye out my hair. I'm oh. talking to her from work in New Orleans. Have fun. I love this. And you get me Subway on the way home. <laughs> okay, I can do that. So, see, you can, you can watch out for your, for your house. You can, you can see your, your, your packages being delivered. <laughs> you can check when your son... Uh, feeds the dog. Tyler, did you feed the dogs today? Yes. They look really hungry. I fed them. They look really hungry. I fed them. Do I have to go to the ring video? Okay, I didn't feed them. <laughs> and of course, you can dispense 
motherly advice like don't come to the door naked. You need this. You need the Ring doorbell. It just takes minutes. Works with either your current wiring or the built-in rechargeable battery. We have it on the battery, and, and the battery lasts for months. You just take it off, plug it into the USB, and, uh, and it'll charge right up overnight. Put your mind at ease. Protect your home with the video doorbell. Time Magazine and USA Today named one of their top 10 gadgets of 2015. Go to ring.com slash hamnation. You will get free expedited FedEx shipping. Ring.com slash hamnation. Uh, and with Ring, you're always home. I love the thing. I, I, <laughs> I can see my wife come come and go. I can I can watch Tyler. I can uh, I can see when things are delivered. You're gonna love Ring. I love it. I really do. It's 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 the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, so go to ringcom hamnation and, and get get hooked up. It's you're gonna love it. I, I promise you. Plus the peace of mind, just knowing that something is watching your door, twenty four seven. All right, uh, I'm going to bring in Amanda. We're uh, actually getting to her a little bit on time. You wanted to talk about tax deductions with Aries because, you know, Ham spent a lot of money to uh, go out and, and do uh, amateur radio emergency uh, service and stuff. And there are, are some actual some some tax deductions you can take. Tell us about that. There is actually um, there's there's some things that you would assume that you actually can deduct that you can't. So that's a number, sorry, I'm going to move my microphone a little bit closer. Anyhow, there's a few that you would think that you can deduct that you can't. So I want you guys to be aware of those as well. But let's first go over the things that you can deduct. First of all, any Aries uniform, which I have props here. See, Aries. Um, anything like this that you're only going to use for Aries events, going to see your served agencies, going to the public meetings, things like that absolutely 100% deductible. Other than that, the only thing that else that's actually 100% deductible is fill in your belly. If you're going to be away from home while you're deployed, any meals that you buy are definitely deductible. Other than that, everything is a little bit questionable until you add in mileage. If you are spending gas and mileage, you're allowed to deduct 14 cents a mile. That doesn't seem like a whole lot. So it's a, it's a little bit less than you would imagine. Now, you cannot go ahead and deduct your IC7700 saying, I helped in Aries with Skywarn last year once or twice. That's not how those kind of things work. So I want you guys to be very sure about your deductions on that. When you buy a radio and you're going to use it for Aries purposes, make sure... It's something that you're willing to give away. So you would have to give it to either your club who is a nonprofit and it's for Aries use, or if your Aries group has actually established a 501c3 corporation um, nonprofit organization, then you can give it to them and say, put this in your cash and then you can deduct it. Now, and that gets very complicated. And I'm going to post uh, this uh, PDF file from the IRS online for you guys on the wiki notes so you guys can take a look at it. There's other things in there too, like if you're going to donate a plane, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, that stuff doesn't concern us. So anyhow, some of the most important things are really about your radio equipment. A lot of us, I, for one, assumed, oh, I bought a cute little bionics unit that's for APRS use, and I only use it for airy stuff. Well, because I'm owning it personally, I really can't deduct it. That's, um, that's some of the stuff to be aware of. Now, you guys, you know, you might sneak it in there, and it might be fine, but if you're ever audited, that would be the biggest problem with that. And um, just a couple of other notes... And I'm going to look over here. Um, your membership dues for your clubs that you belong to. There's tangible values as well as um, your interpretation of the actual value that you get out of it. So if your club dues are $30 a year and you claim that you get roughly $50 worth of value out of it, then there's no deduction. But if you're giving your club $25 a year and your value is only $10, so the club is actually making $15 off of your club dues and putting that to good use or they're a nonprofit, 
then that is deductible. It's very questionable and it's um, it's what they call the gray area. So be careful with that, but look into it. Talk to your tax professional and see what they think about it. Um, those are some of the bigger things. And um, the only other thing that would be deductible is spending time away. Now I wanna go over one other thing. None of your donated time or lost wages are deductible. Remember that, nothing. You cannot deduct a thing about it. So um, don't be taking, I mean, take care of logging your hours and your time because that helps Aries and giving that to their served agencies, but it does not help you at all on your taxes. So that's what I've got. And uh, I'll be looking you guys, if you have any questions in the chat room, I'll try to look at them while I'm addressing some other questions. Yeah, yeah, let's sounds, get to those questions. Go ahead, Doc. Sounds very, sounds very confusing. When in doubt, consult your tax professional, right? Absolutely. And do not say, I saw this on a ham nation, so I know it's true. Yeah, don't we are that. not tax professionals. Don't consult us. Please don't no. do that because I would feel really guilty. <laughs> okay, I got some announcements to make, first of all, and I missed this one for Gordo last week. I'd like to announce that the um, ARRL convention in Puerto Rico is taking place next weekend. I think that's next weekend, January 30th and the 31st. So if you haven't already purchased your tickets, you might be a little bit late, but try anyways and uh, bring your passports and have a good time. Get those nice tans while you're at it. Other than that, we have a ham fest coming up here in Colorado on January 23rd. That's the NCARC fest. And also we have one coming up on, um, also on the same date, the 23rd, DeSoto Arcadia, Florida ham fest on January 23rd. So you guys, if you're in those areas, be sure to try to check them out. And, um, oh, Don, happy national DJ day. I didn't even know there was a day for that. I didn't either. And, and oddly enough, it falls on my son's birthday, which I think is really cool. That so is totally that's, cool. That's neat. So, all right, chat room questions. What do we got? Okay, so this one was for George from a week ago or so, and I didn't get a, get, get a chance to give it to him because he wasn't here at the end of the show. So, George, uh, this comes from Jocelyn, and he says, I currently have a TV antenna in my attic. If I had an HF antenna, a dipole, would it cause problems? Will the radiation from the HF antenna bleed into the TV antenna or would it be okay since they are for different frequencies? I'm not sure the TV could take all the extra power coming from its antenna. Any help is appreciated. Well, this this uh, answer will be about a week old then, Amanda. But, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, um, theoretically, they're two different bands. You know, they're far enough apart that um, you would hope that there wouldn't be interference, but I'm going to say, yeah, there probably will be some. I don't think it will harm the television. But, um, you know, if you hear something banging on the wall every time you key up, that's a good sign that, that you're interfering with the television. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> well, okay, I'm sorry. I was uh, I expected it further. If you do interfere with the television, what do you do then? Um. You stop transmitting or you turn off the television. I mean, you can actually put some filters or, or some traps in there. They make uh, TVI filters that you can put in your coax of your ham rig. Maybe that'll help a little bit. But if they're in real close proximity like that, I'm not sure there's a lot you can do. You could try, um, you know, maybe putting some filtering on the uh, television antenna see if you could get it out. It's just going to be a uh, hit and miss or um, trial and error type of thing there to work that out. But I would expect you you might see some interference. Okay. And interference it comes in all shapes, sizes, forms, and anything you wouldn't expect. So just because you put one filter in place to think that you're not going to get any interference doesn't mean that something else is going to cause it. Uh, we all know that from RF difficulties, things like that. So it's all experimental. And uh, thank you, yeah. Jocelyn, for bringing that question in. That's the only question I got tonight, you guys, amazingly enough, except for 
where's Ham Nation? Where are we at? And I even got several emails right before the show started saying, uh, are we having Ham Nation tonight? So anyhow, they love our live um, startups there pre-show yep. stuff. Anyhow, uh, any other things to add to that, George? Yes, uh, I did want to add something to that. Since um, here in the U.S., practically all of the television now is digital, it might be a little harder to to track down interference. You know, in the old days, you might see some herringbone patterns or, you know, um, something. You might actually hear the audio, you know, from a ham transceiver coming through your television set. Or you see some artifacts in the picture that kind of dance with the modulation, you may not see that uh, with digital television. You know, probably what you'll see is um, some blockiness in the picture or a complete loss of signal or maybe the picture freezes or something. It's going to be a, a little more difficult maybe to uh, to know the source of the interference unless you happen to be sitting there watching the television and notice that it quits every time you key up. Okay. And and, and different um, frequencies will different frequencies will affect different things too. I know that you know HF uh, a lot of times would would affect uh, certain TV channels over the air back in the analog days. Well, uh, when I when I first got licensed twenty or so years ago, uh, I was on two meter, and two meter would absolutely tear up the cable TV system in uh, yep. in St. Bernard Parish in suburban New Orleans where we lived. I was so happy I didn't live near the head end, but uh, wow. that it must have been it must have been like the most porous. Uh, cable system uh, in town or in the area because my handy talkie would just wipe out um, TVs for like two or three houses around. Just a five watt handy talkie would wipe out cable channel five uh, and cable channel six, I think it was. And, and of course, you know, the local channels in New Orleans were four, six and eight. So if you're wiping out, uh, you know, five and six, you're probably getting some on four, two. And, uh, and so I had to I had to watch when I could use my handy talkie around around because of the, the horrible cable TV system back 20 years ago. Probably a lot better now, but uh, that's something else to be aware of. So, yeah. Definitely. But, yeah, make friends with your neighbor. That's that's the first thing. Be on good terms <laughs> with your neighbor and go over there and try to help them. Uh, try to help them do what you can. Because when I when I did get on HF, I was getting into uh, telephones and, and the stereo next door. And so I went over there and helped them put filters on everything. And and I got along great with my neighbors anyway, so it wasn't that big a deal. I just tried to make sure that they weren't watching something really cool on TV. Uh, <laughs> when I was, when I was, when I was operating, I would wait until that show was over. So uh, be so friendly no with your neighbors Bowl. and, and help each. Yeah, exactly. And so help each other out. So that, that's the main thing. Be helpful. And be helpful. we, we interrupted our neighbor. I mean, we, 15 feet apart, maybe at the most. And we mm. were interrupting his uh, direct TV signal. Yep. And actually direct TV was nice enough to come out and they did some filters on their box to help get out the signal. So that, uh, that's what they need to do. But I'm not saying that they're all going to do that. Thank goodness we live in a small town. I'm sorry, you guys, somebody asked the question. I don't think Beavis has uh, a ham license to be operating that radio. Yeah, you gotta move him over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's uh, I think his uh, call sign is Bravo Three Victor India Sierra Beavis. Wait, it, yeah, that is. I, I started to say that's better, but no, that is Beavis. That's that's <laughs> funny. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> all right, He's well, standing next to my D star. So, anyhow, all right, well, we that's are. All I got, we, you guys. We're, yeah, we're we're about out of time here tonight. George, anything else you wanted to add before we uh, mention net frequencies and uh, and and whatnot? I think that's about it, Don. Appreciate everyone being here this week. Uh, Bob and Gordo both should be back next week, and I think uh, probably um, we'll have Val with us as too, uh, or won't we, Don? I think Val will be back next week, and I think the weekend yep. after that we'll have Dale back with with uh, some of his stuff. I think that's. I uh, do believe that's that's correct. That's what we saw yep. anyway. So okay. Uh, and thanks to Neil Rapp uh, for being on tonight and talking about about youth and ham radio. That's uh, uh, that's that's going to be the lifeblood of this hobby is is getting uh, getting the young folks in. So, uh, and also we want you to support uh, our nets. That is um, uh, uh, seventy two seventy eight is the forty meter net. So I want you to check that out. And let's see where are we on uh, on on dewdrop? Uh, what is what is that, George? Uh, the dewdrop in, it's a star dewdrop in star 
Mode number 355800 on Echo Link. And, of course, uh, D-Star. And, Amanda, you probably know where the D-Star net is. I do indeed. It's on 14 Charlie, hosted by K8JTK. He's taking your check-ins right now. Awesome. And also, I want you to... Uh, 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 I want you to go sign up for the Twit newsletter. Yes, Twit has a newsletter. They're sending one out weekly, weekly emails, info about what's happening on Twit. You can uh, check it out at twit.tv slash newsletter. I'm going to sign up uh, right after we get done with the show here so because I want to find out what's going on on the other shows on Twit as well. There's a whole universe of, of cool shows here on the Twit network, and uh, we're just we're proud to be one of them. So. So there you go. So again, uh, Neil, thanks a lot. We appreciate you being on tonight. Amanda, thank you, uh, as always. And George, great stuff. Uh, thank you for making my hair hurt again tonight with the Smith chart uh, stuff. <laughs> and uh, Bob and Gordo will be back next week, and we'll be back to uh, a more regular schedule. The grown-ups will be in charge. So uh, for everybody, uh, and, and uh, Victor, thanks to Victor for uh, twisting the knobs tonight. Uh, Brian is off doing, uh, I don't know, Brian stuff, whatever stuff brian does so uh and happy, yeah, happy brian stuff sounds Tyler. about right yeah it does yeah, it's, yeah. i don't know he's he's uh, he's deworming the corgi or the corgi's deworming him one of the two but, or uh, or anything um yeah uh ninja related i think so he's probably you know? yeah or motorcycle probably motorcycle related that's uh the boys living the dream i'll tell you Motocross. that right now <laughs> living the dream all right, so uh, good night, everybody. We appreciate you watching Ham Nation. And happy birthday, Tyler. Happy 16th birthday to my son. Love you, son, more than anything in the world. And we love you guys, too, for watching Ham Nation. So good night, everybody. 7-3.